I have read about how we plan our lives, making agreements with other souls before we are born. What are your thoughts on this? I'm not convinced that we actually knowingly make agreements with other souls. These seeds of attachments and relations are self-created during each life dream experience. And this determines where we find ourselves in the bardo, in the after life experience, where often we are given the opportunity to review how we have been, how we have acted, and how we might, in another life dream, recuperate or replay certain events that need to be readjusted. And therefore, we already have created the situations and the people with whom we will unite again. The person you hate may be your mother-in-law the next time round. <laughs> or your child to drive you absolutely balmy, yeah. <laughs> or your boss. But because you have that hatred in mind, that is going to come back and hit you at some point in whatever cycle we are recycled through. So this is the function that is called Ishvara in Sanskrit. Uh, it is that which determines what and how we reappear in these planes and <coughs> what events are going to occur for us to try and readjust and see again what we need to do in a fit manner this time round, instead of freaking out or railing against fate or against anything that happens in our life, in our family, we need to take everything as a karmic learning process and not get carried away with it. It is up to you to be the stable center of all these problems that come and realize that it is not coming to me. It is coming to that I which you have falsely created. Karma only accrues to the sense of ego. That sense of ego is not you because you weren't born with it. You have adopted it and believe that it is you. So without that sense of ego, there is no karma. But it is that which is attracting the situations and the same repetitive life cycles every time. Everything in the universe is recycled. Halley's Comet doesn't just come by and then go out to the ends of the universe. It comes back again every so often. Everything comes back. Every thought which we put out is coming round to hit us one way or the other. He seems to have been sort of clear of any sense of ego right through his life. He didn't accumulate any more, but he did he work through yeah. prarabdaha which was past times. Mm. I mean, even when he was a young man, he, he used to beat up the other kids if they, if they fought with him. He was the one who was the strongest one and beat them up. 
and that sort of thing. So he had thieves that attack the ashram one night and beat him on his leg. And, but instead of reacting like anybody else would, he said, look, if you're not satisfied, you can beat the other leg. And his devotees were wanting to fight the, the thieves. And he said, look, that's their dharma. Our dharma is to be sadhus. Let them do their thing. Let them come in, take what you want. We haven't got anything anyway. Um, so he didn't react. And whatever happened to him, he didn't react. He just said, well, that's part of the, the way things are. This is the isness of existence. And so he didn't accrue any more karma, no matter what happened. In other jealous swamis would roll rocks down on him from the mountain and things like that. Took it all in his stride, no problem. If we can make everything no problem, because it is not happening to me, it's when I start thinking it's happening to me that is the problem. Well, why is this happening to me? In my family, in my life situation, in my job. Then you are incurring more karma because you are using this rejection or retraction mechanism that we call sense of ego. Be with what is without reacting. Because that thing is there to test your equanimity, to show you where you are here and now, at every moment.